<sighs> hey, so I have something uh, really cool I wanted to share. Really important too. I actually uh, made a huge mistake. There was, um, or what I think is a huge mistake. It's all speculative. I, I guess I should say that right from the very beginning. Uh, but the three-day fast, you know, at the beginning of the month, this idea we introduced uh, earlier, um, I was going to update everybody, you know, just on some of the wondrous things that happen at different times throughout a fast, you know, like what happens at 24 hours, what happens at 36, 48. Uh, these are all different milestones that represent different, you know, physiological effects of the fast. Um, and so maybe I, maybe I wasn't too too clear during the live stream as to like why I chose three days, but there's a really uh, um, a lot of really important reasons why we why I chose uh, and why three day fasts or seventy two hour fasts or whatever are probably really close to the uh, uh, you know like at a really good time uh, is because there's so many things that. Uh, happen after two days or that are not present you know after two days after a 48 hour fast but are at, a, at the three day mark and so um, you know some of those the, the you know the most nutrient the most important reason why we fast is to have an effect on uh, those nutrient sensing pathways like AMP kinase AMP kinase is through the roof after three days but not after two uh, the suppression of mTOR or the um, mechanistic or mammalian target of rapamycin is is down, it completely has plummeted, has turned off, uh, and protein de protein deacetylation is is stopped. So those are the three biggest sort of nutrient sensing pathways that we want to have as much of an impact on as we can. Those happen at the three day mark, not at the not at the two day mark, and so there's a benefit to just pushing it that extra little bit. Uh, and so, you know, that's the main reason why we chose three days. And it's not really, I mean, it's, you know, glucose is down. Uh, some of the more typical changes that are amplified after that, after the two day mark is glucose is completely exhausted. Uh, your insulin levels are almost immeasurable, and um, uh, uh, one thing that I that I really wanted to share, <laughs> my mistake, my really bad mistake, is that um, uh, one of the things that happens when you start to fast, you know, you get to about that twenty four hour mark, especially for maybe what you could consider the novice faster. Uh, gets to that 24 hour mark, their production of a particular ketone body called beta hydroxybutyrate or BHB is uh, beginning. And uh, you really don't get that magical ketone until, yeah, until you start hitting that 24 hour mark. You become more efficient uh, in, in, as you develop your expertise to fast the fasting protocol. But um, beta hydroxybutyrate doesn't start to be produced until after about 24 hours. And when that happens, it competes for uh, transport in the, in the kidneys. Uh, it competes with uric acid. And what's special or significant about that is because uh, uh, I think the transporter proteins are called like uh, glute, glute 9 and you're you're at one or something like that but they uh, beta hydroxybutyrate competes with uh, uric acid for that transporter and beta hydroxybutyrate always wins uh, it, it wins in its ability to transport into your brain uh, so if BHB always wins uh, it's out competing at 24 hours or so it's out competing uric acid in the kidneys for transport for elimination I guess and uh, and so that means that uric acid is not being eliminated so there's more uric acid in your in your blood and so for a lot of the fasting research they they can show that you have a doubling or a triple pulling of uric acid in your blood your kidneys are responsible for filtering out at least 90 percent of uric acid uh, it the reason why it doesn't take all of the uric acid out 
is uh, you know some of it is taken out through your lymphatic system through your skin some of it is uh dealt with in the in your uh um uh in your intestines but um the there there is always a little bit of uric acid in your blood and that's because it acts as a antioxidant has a really powerful antioxidant effect now you take into the process of a fast you hit 24 hours that's when your body is like has to change and that's when autophagy turns on you know all of these positive effects start to begin happening uh, and they take a long time to sort of rev up you know rev up their motors so they're getting to an operational level in that time when they're just taking off slowly what's happening is there's a lot of stress there's a lot of damage uh that we measure as uh you know reactive oxygen species is through the roof ross damage uh oxidative stress uh you know the whole reason why we're so obsessed with antioxidants is to keep the um oxidative stress levels low and so uh and when you're in a fast you hit this period like just after around 24 hour mark uh, you know, you could say between 24 hours and 36 hours, your ROS levels are through the roof. Your reactive oxygen species, oxidative stress, oxidative damage, DNA damage, all of these things are incredibly uh, um, uh, potent at that time. Uh, but <laughs> what starts exactly at that time is beta hydroxybutyrate is outcompeting uric acid in the kidneys, leaving more uric acid free flowing in your blood that is able to accomplish and pick up that slack for all of that oxidative damage, all of that oxidative stress. And so, uh, you know, because it's an antioxidant, it acts as an antioxidant in your blood. And so it's able to do its job and it's able to mitigate all of that damage. So fasting is like a really perfect physiological process uh, at the point where you're uh oxygen oxygen stress levels should be at their peak there was a process that that was designed or created to mitigate that damage and that's uric acid so uric acid is important you know a lot of us who start fasting uh i think um if you go to the doctors throughout this process um and they see such high levels of uric acid uh a lot of people get thrown onto a medication called aluprinol or something like that that's the one that for gout and because yeah because your uric acid levels are so high so they have to stop that is what is what the feeling is but the reality is is that it should stay there now when i did my fast i felt like garbage so never make this mistake when you fast uh i i, I really think that it was because uh you know I, I was sort of in this state that i had to prepare my body for this fast and uh the one of the things that we did to prepare our myself is you know i started drinking a bunch of labrador tea uh and then just as everything was starting i made a big pot of bearberry and i was drinking bearberry arctostaphylus uversi that's um benicubis. it's our kidney medicine and I think what happened, you know, it's what we use for gout. When somebody has gout, the 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 bearberry that they that they have that they drink, uh, you know, if a lot, I tell a lot of people, you know, just have it in the evening, and when they wake up in the morning, uh, the the gout is gone, and it just feels like everything in their body is is smooth and like every knuckle is full of butter. It feels so good to be, you know, uh, free of all of the uric acid crystals not just in the one big toe so it's, it's such an incredibly powerful and like a lot of people just one cup of bearberry and all the gout is just so it's really really good it's one of my favorites and uh, to, to be able to give people and so i thought you know uh one of the things that we know about fasting is that uh you have a lot more uric acid and i thought that you know this was largely just attributed to the breakdown of nucleic acids which is completely natural and normal uh but the i think really what's happening is that uh uh, it's it's working to act as an antioxidant to pick up all of that oxidative stress level oxidative damage that's happening in that particular time frame as all of those other processes are ramping up uh, because at a certain stage you do hit an equilibrium uh, where you know you're breaking down free fatty acids into ketones you're breaking down um, 
uh, you're breaking down glycerol to glucose, eventually this will hit an equilibrium at around three millimolars uh, will be your steady blood sugars for the remainder of the fast, whether it's 40 days, 100 days, it's going to be, it's going to stay the same. So, uh, you know, there is an equilibrium that you hit. Uh, we know that a lot of these are turned on. Everything is turned on fully at seven days and so at three days that's when everything is is uh is, is uh um going autophagy is not fully set on and fully engaged until at about seven days though uh in with novice fasters anyways um my mistake yeah i think was having a bunch of medicine you know for my kidneys and for uric acid and i think there was an issue with uh, uh the medicine trying to solve the competition between beta hydroxybutyrate and uric acid uh so that maybe this was resolved and uric acid was being uh flushed out properly uh because i was drinking like like eight liters of water every day uh and i was peeing like every five minutes it was ridiculous and so i think that lack of uric acid flowing through my blood uh it wasn't doing wasn't uh that so that antioxidative uh potential of uric acid wasn't there and the oxidative stress level that i was experiencing was just through the roof so uh, I'm never going to do that again. That was the worst three-day fast I've ever had. <laughs> I did it though. Uh, I cut out like two hours early because it, dude, I just never felt so bad before. Like the, the headaches, generally like when, when I'm doing a fast, I just feel like a machine. Like I could do anything in three days. I didn't even go for a walk with my daughter. It was, it was really intense. So never making that mistake again. And now you know a little bit more about Bearberry. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, binnacle beans. So I just wanted to share with you guys that quick little mistake, and uh, um, maybe um, you know I shared this in that live stream. So I I really hope that uh, everybody who had the thought I'm going to use bearberry to prepare for my next fast. Maybe that's not the best idea. So I I rescind that or retract that statement. <laughs> and uh um uh you know hopefully i'll work on a little a couple more things so that uh we'll um uh get this three-day fast really down to a science uh with all of the included medicinal uh preparations required and it's gonna be pretty fun but for now no more bearberry friends during the fa during or before a fast okay I'll see you guys later. Bum on peace.